Hi, I'm Tom with a list of interesting things. It's been a while since a proper video because of some busy stuff in the winter, but we're back. And today in interesting political things is a harrowing anniversary. Today is the one-year anniversary of the Capitol coup. It's important, I think, to discuss the event that has in so many ways shaped political discourse in the last year, and to discuss the state of U.S. democracy in the wake of this event. As always, I hope you'll like and subscribe to stay up to date on this and all the most interesting things. Let's dive right in. For anyone who's blacked out the last year of U.S. history, for which I would not begrudge you, the 2021 United States Capitol attack, called alternately the Capitol Insurrection or the Capitol Coup, was an attack on the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th, 2021, one year ago today. The attack was the crescendo of propaganda attacks carried out by right-wing extremists before and immediately after the 2020 presidential election. They claimed before the election that the only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. That's a quote. This propaganda network, headed by Donald Trump, continued after then-President Trump lost the 2020 election to falsely claim that the election had been fraudulent. This falsity, pumped into their brains by this propaganda network, caused discord to fester in right-wing voters. They were led by these people who had lied to them to protest against a functioning democracy under the pretense that it was fraudulent. This reached a fever pitch on January 6th, when the Electoral College results were being certified. There were calls from right-wing politicians and public figures, pressuring then-Vice President Pence to decline to accept the ballots of a legal election. While this certification was ongoing, former President Trump led a rally of right-wing supporters across Washington to the Capitol building, urging pressure and violence, using turns of phrase like, if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore, and we will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. Concluding with the phrase, quote, We're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. We're going to the Capitol. We're going to try... We're going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. Now, whether former President Trump intended for the crowd of political dissidents... He was leading up Pennsylvania Avenue to become a crowd of insurrectionists, is not entirely clear. But it is plain that the disinformation campaign he headed caused them to believe falsely that their country was in danger, and to attack based on that false information. Crowds flooded the Capitol in the first successful taking of the U.S. Capitol building by a hostile force since 1814. The entirety of the U.S. Congress was emergency evacuated through tunnels under the Washington streets as insurrectionists smashed the windows leading to the Senate chambers. Sensitive data was accessed, hard drives were stolen, and artifacts of cultural and political significance were stolen and destroyed. At least 143 individuals were injured, and as of now, 727 individuals have been charged for their actions on that day. Gallows were erected outside the Capitol, and chants from the crowd of thousands included Stop the Steal and Hang Mike Pence. These images are hard to look at. But before we move on, I feel that it's important to understand and internalize what this day was and what it almost was. Several hours after the insurrectionists entered the Capitol building, and just after they were cleared out, procedures resumed for the certification. And the moments before Pence retook the stand are burned into my memory. I remember that moment. I remember exactly where I was, halfway through Pennsylvania. I was on my way from my home in upstate New York to Washington to join the press crowd to document what was to happen on the 7th and 8th, trying with some success to hop between spotty NPR stations somewhere outside Harrisburg. In those, moment, in those, in those moments, 
I marveled at the fact that because of the propaganda system that had been so abused by right-wing extremists like the former president, the fate of the country had really blown through all of its checks and balances and teetered on the edge to be decided by one man. And I wondered in that moment if we were still a democracy. If the country was gone. Now, former President, I'm sorry, former Vice President Pence chose to side with the Constitution in that moment, but that was never a guarantee. And when something like this happens again, when, not if, it won't be a guarantee then either. So that's January 6th, but it's not exactly the end of the story, because the opinions and perspectives of different sects of the American populace vary greatly on what happened that day and what has happened since. So to round things off and to try to think about the future, I thought we'd take a look at a poll. Uh, this one just came out a few days ago from Ipsos NPR. It's a very reputable combination, by the way, not like those idiots at Emerson. Uh, now, normally I wouldn't care much about a poll that asked Americans their opinions on whether or not things are real. Uh, your opinion on climate change doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter to me whether you think climate change is real or not. Climate change is real whether you think it is or not. But in this case, this is sort of a social issue. If Americans believe that democracy is in danger, then democracy is in danger. So, let's take a look, because they're... Well, the poll isn't exactly optimistic. A strong majority of Americans are feeling pessimistic about the state of the country. 64% agree that American democracy is in crisis and at risk of failing. 70% feel the same about America itself. This spans... Cultural barriers, gender and race barriers, generational barriers, and party barriers. Uh, but I think that it gets more interesting when we dive a little bit deeper. 65% of Americans agree with the statement, I accept the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. That means that 35% don't. And this number falls to less than half among Republicans because the propaganda system in place is so strong. It references, uh, I believe it's up here, it references a, a, a news, news consumption. Let me see if I can find it with a search. Yes, here we are. Nearly a year after the January 6th events at the U.S. Capitol, Americans hold mixed perceptions on the event. Moreover, nearly one in four agree that there can be certain scenarios where political violence is justified. There is a more than 50% point difference between Democrats who consume political news at least weekly and Republicans who do the same when it comes to, belief, when it comes to the belief that the attempt was a coup. 65% of Democrats versus 11% of Republicans. <sighs> Compare that to 32% broadly. <sighs> and this is a real, a real ringer. Nearly one in three Republicans who are regular political news consumers say that the events were carried out by Antifa and government agents. meaning that the right-wing propaganda machine has been so effective that they have convinced nearly a third of Republicans, I should say nearly a third of their Republican viewer base, that the people there weren't there and that they are different people. 
which is, let's call it interesting. And it strikes me, and I'll, I'll touch on a, a, a bit of speculation taken from 538 on this in one of their recent podcasts. It strikes me that this event is not a 9-11 style unity moment where everyone came together and agreed that this was a problem and in need of fixing. And it's certainly not the reason, but one of the reasons why that is the case, I think, is because something between 35 and 55 percent of Americans are being consistently lied to on a daily basis by people who they trust. Now, I'm not going to posit solutions to these problems in this video. I may in future make something on how democracy could be spared and how propaganda could be fought, but for today, on this day, I think it's important going into 2022 to remember how close we came and how close we still are. So, until next time, be like the January 6th anniversary. Reflective and serious. And above all, be interesting. I'll see you next time.